Hey everybody, Aaron Hilliard here, another episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Today I'm with the distinguished Dr. Michael Bug, and we're at his property, a veritable mushroom wonderland in itself. And uh, Michael's gonna show us around to collect some cool mushrooms, head out and learn some stuff from Michael Bug. So thanks for joining us today. Yeah. And uh, let's go check out what you got here. Okay, let's look right. around. Mushroom Wonderland. Oh, finally made it to Bugs' uh, property way up on this hill. It is crazy up here. Super big forest. Michael Bug lives in an absolute middle of a forest up here. It's amazing. Waking up in uh, Dr. Bug's house. The pictures that are in his mushroom book of his son. Look at this view out here. Wow. It's awesome. They got eaten by uh -huh. holy deer. Oh, there's one right there. This is an interesting, it's an oak associate, and this is Swillellus amygdalinus. Oh wow, it's like red, like red poured almost. Yeah, it's a red poured blue stainer. Dang, so is red pores on a bolete like mushroom always always a danger sign? 50% of them are edible. About 10% of them will kill you. Oh wow. And the rest you don't want to eat. <laughs> so is that, that counts with the uh, Suillus? This counts in the probable edible. Probable edible, huh? Probable edible. But I wanted to take these for... Uh, so this one's on the way out. Oh yeah. Not, and you can see what it has. It, the spore print is kind of uh, all of this is typical. Wow. For these things. And this associates with this oak. It's associated with these Oregon white oaks here. Beautiful trees. So you got a lot of oak here on your property. So even though it's dry here. Uh, I, I water the lawn. I have this little lawn tractor. We should have some meadow mushrooms. Ooh. Things that people call agaricus campestris. Those are my favorite. But they are not campestris. Here's a squash one. Oh, beautiful gills. Oh, look at that. Nice pink gills. I really like agaricus mushrooms. The thing, the thing to know about these that I didn't realize is they get foul tasting fairly quickly after you pick them. So oh. if you really want them delicious, you eat them right away. Oh. The same day you pick them, you don't want to let them sit around. What do you think of the uh, grocery store Garicus bisporus? It's got a bad rep in the mycological circles, but... It's got a horrible rep in my circles. Does it? Uh -huh. I wouldn't eat those for $1,000. Really? You couldn't pay me to eat them. Why, why is that? Well, they're carcinogenic. Uh -huh. Bees are not medicinal. C, they're not particularly good for you aside from being carcinogenic. So, <laughs> uh, so I, don't, I don't eat any agarics. I'm actually allergic to most of them, although I'm not allergic. So, now this is another Ooh. Oak associate. Is this a pisolithus? Yes, this is a pisolithus. Oh, nice. And we're going to collect this for the artists. Yeah, I've the never group. seen a white one like that. It's well, kind of dark brown. Now, if I cut it open, you'll, it won't be white. It'll have that brown kind of yellow rainbow yeah. speckle thing going on. Yeah, oh, another one. Here's one that's kind of open up. Now you see the brown. Oh, and, yeah. And if we lop one of these guys in half, no, that's oh, that's so cool. That's what you're more used to seeing. Yeah, inside a pisolithus, and this is an unnamed species. Oh, okay. so I'm just going to call it pisolithus. We we're calling it arisus here. But yeah, but it is not. It is not. No, I, not I've read arises. that as well. And, and arisus was was actually a fairly short lived. I think it was only in use for a couple of years around here. Yeah. It, it covered all of North America, from what I understand. They just yeah. said they were yeah. all the same. And they aren't all the same. Whoa, big. Yeah. Dead man's foot. Man, that one, you could almost see why they call it that, right? Yeah, it looks more like... Or the dog turd fungus. Yeah. <laughs> sure That's going to schmutz up all the other mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is why 
I'm not going to be putting these in my mushroom basket. That's still in the car. <laughs> uh, and we'll be using that later today. You have a lot of quartan areas here, huh? I've got a new... I think there's four new species of quartan areas from this oak grove right here. Wow. And I've got maybe a total of oh. 20 new species of quartan areas. There's a new species of polypore. We can probably... There's probably a dead one sitting up here. We haven't even worked on naming this one yet, uh, and it's a couple years old now. <laughs> We're kind of going, oh yeah, going to pot. But this is an mm. oak-associated polypore. Whoa. You see where I cut it off to get a look at the interior? Yeah. And uh, I was able it's to growing really right there. What this you this tree is the host. This yeah, is, this tree oh. is the host. It was associated to this particular. A oak. lot of people would ask. That's a burl. Is this chaga? Yeah, yeah, you see that online a lot. <laughs> for example, well, bachaga is almost always only on birch, and this is a little bit far from birch. Did chaga occur here? Uh, up in the very northern parts of the of Washington State. Oh, but not this far down because oh. we don't have birch. Right, right. Yeah, I know they in the Yukon and Alaska they collect a lot of it, and east of the Rockies. But so I keep. For fire prevention, I keep this mode, oh. but it makes it really uh, interesting, easy to find the the quaternarius when they start. Mm -hmm. and they, we have to have one or two hard freezes before the fall, before the courts start under the oak. Yeah, and we haven't had a hard freeze here yet. The coldest has been is 41 degrees, oh. but <laughs> there's a court that grew right over here. I've only seen it once in Winoa Siegel and Shannon Adams were here last November. The season was good for one week. It, and it started three days before they arrived and ended four days after they Lucky. left. And so this was just paved with, I think we had oh, cool. eight different species of Cortinarius. Oh, Shannon was in heaven, huh? Right in here. and. That's when uh, Noah introduced me to the oak-associated Russell brevipes. Russell brevipes mm. is a complex of a whole bunch of things. Mm -hmm. And he said the oak associate, he greatly prefers it to chanterelles or in, just, it is really delicious. Yeah. That particular brevipes group member. Yeah. And so I just looked at him and then the next day I said, oh, I've got I've to try him. So I came up here. There was about 25 of them that and the deer had eaten every one. Oh man, overnight. they really were tasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, However, <that's> good. <laughs> good eyeball. This oh. is this has been attacked by the bully bullied eater, mm -hmm. and it's either uh, Chrysospermus or Microspermus hypomyces. And what's being eaten? This is Calobolitis marshii. Oh, wow. This is the oak bitter bolete. Wow, look at that. And so I'm going to put it in the basket, even though it's half eaten. It's a blue staining bolete, and it's very similar to Butyri boletus quercy regius, which also grows right here, which is a butter, butter. bolete. Yeah. And I have once in a while mistakenly cooked this, thinking I had a butter bolete. And this is a bitter bully. It's pretty obvious. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, nobody ever gets poisoned by it because you don't take a second you bite. You don't eat enough, yeah. <laughs> I have no yeah. idea whether it's... Now, I finally have a reliable way of telling them apart. It's not going to work on this because it's all molded. If you cut them in half from top to bottom, the bitter bullets are white to pale yellow. Mm -hmm. The butter bullets are pale yellow to deep yellow. Okay. So there's a slight overlap. The flesh. The flesh. Okay. It's the flesh that you're looking at. And now I have found butter bullies right where we're standing wow. as big around as a dinner plate. Whoa. And so one of them will be a meal for us. It'll take us two days to eat just one good. Uh, awesome. Butyri bolitis quercy regius. And they're only a little bit better than porcinis. <laughs> My favorite is Butyri boletus abiaticola, which grows at 4,000 feet in 
July and early August. Uh -huh. So it's not the season for it, but it, it goes it grows right where one of our forays today is going to be. Oh man! But it's really abundant in Oregon. We're at the very and in California, we're at the very northern reach of that particular butterbly. That is my favorite because it stays just the right amount of crispiness. It doesn't get at all limp, mm -hmm. but it's not so crispy that it's unpleasant. Mm -hmm. And uh, the flavor is just very distinctive. It's a wonderful bull eat flavor, but much more intense than a king bull eat even. Mm, wow. And they are now, of the bull eats, my favorite. My oh, absolute favorite mushroom, of course, is Hurricima beatus. The bear's oh, head. really? Oh, okay. Yeah. And second to that would be the lion's mane, which grows on the oaks. Dang, yeah. And the lion's mane will start showing up here in mid-November. So we're too early for lion's mane. Man, you got. It. Yeah. I, I would never leave here. Yeah, just got. Why would I leave? You got everything. I don't go anywhere else. <laughs> and now that I've discovered this, so let's walk around a little yeah. bit more and see if what else. So I want to ask you to elaborate. Uh, you mentioned that the Agaricus bisporus being carcinogenic, and I know that you're the teacher of Paul Stamets, and he kind of famously is on the record as saying, I can't talk about that. Well, um, I have no idea what he was talking about. Oh, okay. The cover-up continues. The cover-up continues. Well, I'm no, I'm just kidding. It up, I don't know what the hell he was talking about. Because so. half of the people were thinking, well, it's carcinogenic, could ruin the market for a billion-dollar industry well, if people yeah, are scared of is. cancer. It's not... But other people are saying, no, it's the hydrazines. It's going to make explosives and blow well, things it, up. It is the hydrazines that are carcinogenic. Right. And but what is the threat? Making explosives from you, mushrooms? Oh, no, you're not going to. There's not enough hydrazine in there. No, that's what I'm saying. You'd have to spend millions to metabolize enough mushrooms to make one little explosive, yeah, keep, I think. To keep this an oak grow, when I see uh, this is a grand fur seedling, I pull the little the seedlings up because... Oaks are in 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 endangered in this region. Man, the acorns yeah, really throw you off. But yeah, you keep this oak patch real nice and clean. I, I was wondering, does he mow that or is do the oak? Because like walnut, doesn't it like kind of kill stuff around it to keep, you know, it's kind of one of them does, plants. Yeah. That... But I have to, I'm, I literally mow this. This is my outdoor hot tubs, oh. spring fed. And then I now have a on-demand propane water heater. And so you can either take a shower or fill the tubs and have a hot tub. Man, just sitting in I've the woods. I've never had more than four people in each tub. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of a lot of nice wood chips down. You see a lot of mushrooms. There's my new strawberry bed. But here's a little scleroderma. Oh, yeah. Now, now these are true vomit comets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you if you were to eat one of these, even even one of these small ones, you get so sick so fast that there's no lasting bad. Oh, consequences but there's the interior so they look kind of like a puffball yeah they do but the difference between these and a puffball is these are kind of hard they're not a they're not soft like a they don't feel like a marshmallow mm -hmm. a, a, an edible puffball has got to look like a marshmallow and feel like it and the sclerodermas also tend to have some of them have a lot of root structure others have just a little but you'll always get all these micro these are clusters of mycorrhizae at the base of the scleroderma. So this is a mycorrhizal mushroom. It no, it's well, no, it's a rhizomorph. Uh, rhizomorphs. Mm -hmm. That's just that just means a whole bunch of mycelium Tangled together. Tangled up hyphae. It hasn't yeah. got anything to do with mycorrhizal or not. Right. But Wow, well, yeah, people could confuse I mean from the outside, but you cut that open, it's clearly something different. Yeah. But they also if, if people don't know, these are sold in Europe as truffles for people who don't know what the hell they're doing. But what you need to know about truffles is truffles smell delicious. Yeah. And an unripe truffle has no smell, no taste, no value. Mm -hmm. These have no smell, no taste, and a negative value because mm -hmm. you'll give you 
probably within five minutes of consumption, you won't make it to the bathroom. Okay. So if you find out you just ate a toxic mushroom and you find one of these, maybe eat it really quick and throw everything Well, in. <laughs> uh, that isn't necessarily what you want to do because you can get dehydrated when you look. Uh, so one point. of the tricks when you eat a toxic mushroom besides go, is to drink a whole lot of Gatorade or, or Pedialyte because you need to replace all those salts that you're vomiting up with your liquids. Mm -hmm. And you have to stay hydrated, otherwise you'll do kidney damage. So that's good. That's a good little subject. You're kind of the toxicology expert of North America for a long time. And well, basically like of more than North America. Of the world, we'll say. <laughs> yeah, and, and so, yeah, I mean, what does somebody do if they go, realize, oh, my gosh, I just ate a death cap? What, what would you suggest somebody well, would do? Now, or, or a deadly amanita, you know? If it's really quick. They start getting sick, and you know, they I, go, oh, if no. By the time they're getting sick... You go to the doctor, you insist on, uh, on, on IV fluids and push like mad. You want to, you want, you literally can pee the amatoxin out. Mm -hmm. But most doctors are not aggressive enough in putting you on enough of an IV. They'll put you on a low drip or something. Man, that you've got to force the fluids. You've got to make that person pee and pee and pee. Oh. And you can prevent liver damage and save their life. In over 90% of all cases, even if you eat two or three. Wow. Okay. Uh, but, and if you only eat one, this I don't recommend. I've known people who didn't go to the doctor and just bought Pedialyte. Really? Wow. But so. you don't want to try, if it's been more than an hour, vomiting doesn't do any good. It's absorbing into and, your blood. And you don't, and you don't want to vomit. But you really want to start getting... And the other thing, and this isn't accepted practice, but milk thistle is famous for curing kidney and liver disease. But milk thistle extract but isn't absorbed if you ingest it. So they, they make uh, an injectable form of the milk, and it's called silymarin. And, but it's really expensive and hard to get. However... If you combine your milk thistle with phosphatidylserine, and there's one company in Italy that does it, and it's sold all over the world. So a little bottle of, and it's called various names, but the milk thistle phytosome, or it, and you just ingest it. And that, because of the associated... Uh, You bound it to something that carries it through the intestinal wall into the bloodstream. It's very effective. Then you can get your survival rate up close to 100%. Wow, I've heard about the milk thistle. But... Yeah, but if you take milk thistle by itself, it doesn't do anything to help mm. you. Because it goes straight out, mm. doesn't get absorbed. So you have to combine it with the phosphatidylserine. Mm-hmm. And then it gets absorbed. And there's one company in Italy that does it, but it's sold under a whole bunch of different brands. I get mine from Swanson. Oh, I was going to say, like, most people wouldn't have that laying around. So well, I've tried to talk hospitals <laughs> into keeping a bottle on the shelf. It's shelf stable for years. You don't have to refrigerate it or anything. Mm -hmm. But it's not an approved, studied medicine. Right. There's one or two hospitals that'll do it. But there's other hospitals that'll give the milk thistle by itself, even though it's worthless, because that's an accepted practice. Mm -hmm. It's an accepted practice as it isn't worth anything. Right. And the, huh. the milk thistle phytosome is not an accepted practice. And so... It's all paperwork. Man. They could get sued for malpractice if yep. it didn't go right. Yeah. So I don't, I, I don't know if these are still here. And they're really small little br LBMs. A little foliotina or something? Foliotina, that's mm -hmm. exactly right. And it's what people typically call foliotina filaris. Okay, yeah, the old conos. It, but it's, a, it's an un... Oh, there's one. It's an oh, unnamed species. Oh, here's and, one. Oh, look, it's got that nice prominent annulus. Yeah, here, you want to oh, use look, my knife, knife and pop those out of the ground? Oh, no, that rock landed right on it. Yeah, but there's three of them there. Yeah. 
And uh, so I sent this off to. So that guy with his little a food scientist in little ring. Let's get a close up in Nebraska, and she's going to do a full sequence on this, a full genome oh. sequence, and she's going to analyze this for amatoxins. Oh yeah, because it has the same toxins as the deadly uh, ammonite phylloides. And phylloides is so deadly because it's big and beautiful and people eat it. This mushroom has never killed anyone to my knowledge because it's a small little brown crud mushroom. And even people picking psilocybes, this is kind of too insignificant. Right. Look at that, it's a nice young one. Yeah. So it's really got creamy colored gills, but they turn kind of orange rusty color. Yeah, well more of a a, a, a brown than not, there's not much orange to it mm -hmm. but nice. now we got to figure out some way i got my little tackle box but it's all the way at the truck yeah and, I, and my tackle box is i might uh, i'm just gonna lay these in here and hope we don't lose them daniel calls them you got all the basket bullies in there that are gonna smash your little mushroom yeah <laughs> but i don't think they're gonna move where i put them yeah so cool there, there might be a few more over by the zucchinis here and I am fascinated with the little deadly mushrooms for sure. I just, it's such a, it's a curious thing. So right? this, this particular folio Tina, I can say for sure is not named and we're going to have to find someone who wants help me. I don't name things by myself. I find a, a, I'm considered a professional mycologist, but I'm not formally trained, but I've been informally trained by all the best in the country Yeah. <laughs> from Alexander Smith, uh, uh, Orson Miller, Daniel Stuntz, yeah. and, and Joe Amorati at the University of Washington is the current guy. So I've gotten I've gotten to sit in their labs. Are you a member of the uh, MSA? No, it's too expensive. Oh, okay. I can't afford it. I would. People think of professor and professors make a lot of money, but college professors make less than high school teachers. Every good mycologist has to have a pile of wood chips in there. Let's see what we've got on it. <laughs> uh, I had some nice uh, hallucinogenic gymnopolis on it uh, oh, recently. That'd be nice. But it's been really dry. So I don't look like I have any magic mushrooms growing on it at the moment. I think those have got to be the most beautiful of all the psychedelic mushrooms. They were growing right here. Yeah, I've got a couple dry ones in the house. This is Diospirosa virginiana. They grow wild in the eastern part of the United States, as far north as um, New York, and they grow as far west as Texas. A persimmon. And, huh? and they vary in color and size and shape, and, but this is sort of a standard average one. And Diospirus literally means fruit of the gods. Oh, wow. And what you need to know about it is if you don't understand what you're doing, the gods will punish you. So try this. Uh oh. All right, he picked this persimmons up off the ground. Yep. It's very Here's soft. another one, and I'm going to do soft. it myself. Okay. Uh, eat the whole thing. Yep. There we go. If I don't come back, Bugs using me for fertilizer. Oh man, those are good. If you pick one off the tree, you will never taste one again what do you mean? because they're so tannic they'll pucker your mouth up and you'll swear oh. you'll never be able to open your mouth again oh that's why they're the fruit of the gods those are delicious you gotta I've know never what tasted you're doing anything like that yeah all right thanks for taking us on that tour around the property we found a few mushrooms but more more than anything got to hang out with dr bug and uh, see his property and stuff so thanks for joining this episode hopefully we'll get a chance to do more videos like this in the future yeah um, i hope so yeah and awesome. i'll see you at nama too yep we'll be at nama for a and randall so yep all right much love everyone take care